Okay. Well, hello. My name is Doreen Heater, and this microphone is not for your benefit or mine. <laughs> Just thought I'd say that out front. So it looks really big in 1960-ish to me, but we're going to survive. I guess it's better than the lapel. It, it does better, I don't know, recording. But I'm so glad that you're here. And the fewer that... Um, Few of you know that planning a calendar can be stressful, <laughs> probably almost equal to financial budgeting, but um, uh, the calendar is in response and should work with the finances of your ministry department and or even lack of, and uh, God has a plan for your church, and he has a mission for your church and the children that you're ministering to, um, and when you go to create it, God wants you to have his he wants your ear to be right up close to what he wants for your church because he alone knows the design of your church, the children in your church, and the community that you're going to be reaching. That's how you plant. That's how the first things that you start with is the listening from God. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to ask God to help us to navigate some of the tough questions of it, all right? So let's pray. God, thanks so much for being with us today. I ask, Lord, that you would help us to comprehend a bunch of information, but God, to take that information and put it into you so that lives can be transformed, God. Thank you so much for these people, God. They're a great people, and I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would divinely speak to each of them and help them to be about the mission that you've called them to do. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, planning your calendar calendar, like I said, can be kind of stressful. And um, uh, I've been doing annual calendar planning <laughs> for 25 years, and it never gets any easier for some reason. Um, I would think that it would, um, but with every transition, every church change, every leadership change, staff change, budget change, uh, attendance change, um, culture changes, DNA of your church change with every change your calendar changes. And then also as to how God is calling you to reach your uh, your community, I think also affects your calendar planning. And so today I'd like to uh, encourage you to have careful planning, share your resources from other colleagues and your network, ask questions of others, just like uh, the speaker said today. Uh, don't rely upon necessarily what's always been done. Uh, do something new, ask for new people's input, um, and your annual calendar can be a success. You know, every fall our church uh, begins to plan what we believe God wants to see accomplished in our church and community. The children's ministry team I serve with um, and have had the privilege for the last 10 years to serve, as we gather, we always start with prayer, we add creativity, and then we intentionally plan out the calendar year. <clears throat> we then actively seek for ways to improve and change what we have done so that the calendar of special events or general events like the big rocks are accomplishing Thank you. The mission of God and our church. Those are the two blanks that you have there. Um, the bottom line is your calendar is not for busy work. Your calendar is not for event sake. Your calendar is not for program sake. Your calendar it must accomplish the mission of God. Challenge your thinking on that. Be missional and intentional. Um, and it also must mirror up to and match the mission of God calling on your church and your leadership team, your pastor's team. Um, and I, I've had the privilege and honor to serve at different sized churches, and the same things are true. You must balance church calendars, home life, okay, um, children's calendars, your spouse, all of those different things. You, you're, if some of you serve on um, the pastoral team, you have to balance the bigger calendar team. There's all sorts of calendars that you're trying to balance, including your own life, and that can be a challenge. And so um, as we dive in here, may God speak to you and help you and give you some tools that you need to accomplish this. So here's the first thing. What is your goal? Uh, and like I said, begin with prayer, because God has a purpose for your children and families that are attending your church or not attending your church that he wants you to reach. And then the events you put on the calendar play a large role in fulfilling that mission that God's called you to do. Follow his leading and direction. Consider also the stated mission and written values of your church. If you do not know the mission what, what, not just what's on a wall, <laughs> but if you do not know what the mission of your church is and the stated values. So there's usually a big overarching missional goal of your church. Uh, we want to see people have a, an experience uh, fulfilling Christian lives. That's our 
that's our missions goal. Then we have 10 value statements that we make, and we actually call them biblical characters. We are worshipers. We serve like crazy. We build bridges to our community, and so on. We have 10 value statements that help us to be, as you were, those are filters. So the biggest being the mission of God, your mission of your church, because we know the Matthew 28 calling, right? We know what God's called us to do. Then what's the mission of your church? That flavor um, that that's the starts the DNA, and then the ten values or eight values or five values. Some churches have as little as three. But usually there's value statements made, things that pastor says all the time. Um, one of the value statements that we had was we uh, met, we're a church that is making a difference. It's one of our value statements, and we say it a lot. And we said it actually before we put it in writing. And it was something that came out of his heart. Uh, we believe in the Bible and we live the Bible. Um, that's one of our value statements. And those things, those help filter what's going to go on your calendar um, if you know the values. Um, if you aren't aware of them, seek out your lead pastor and learn his heart and direction. Um, perhaps the pastoral team, um, if you're not on that team, ask them, what is, your, what is the mission of our church? And look for more than just a statement. Look for content, look for heart um, behind that. You need to know specifically what you want to accomplish with each event. Stick to that purpose and carefully prepare the environments to accomplish that purpose. I think that it's really important that if you want to accomplish something and you're, like say you want to hit a target on an air, uh, arrow on a target, you're not going to aim a different direction, right? You're like, I see the target. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go after that. And all of the rings lead up to the very core, right, of the target. Um, so don't be shooting arrows and buckshot doing a lot of things. Well, we always do the, uh, that's buckshot. That doesn't have any intentionality to it if it can't be attached to your mission and values. If it cannot be, it should not be on your calendar. It's using valuable resources that God didn't call you to do valuable resources not of our money of time your people they get tired if they do if your calendar is full of events we can have large events wear big t-shirts and no one come to know jesus that is a great book you should read it it's very true that if our event does does not target to a specific purpose and we stick to it then we've lost the value we're, we're off target we're off mission and how many know that if a vector gets started at less than point zero 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 one and as it goes down if you continue something it's going to be eventually so far off the mission of what God's called you to do so stay on mission next determine is this event going to be for our people inward focused which is fine because we're about fellowship um, uniting people that type of thing um, but oftentimes we're concerned with outward focus right because that's what God's mission is is that we're to reach teach, seek, save the lost, right? So bring clarity to your event by sharing that true purpose. Um, decide whether in advance. So for me, if for instance, example, VBS, it rubs me to no end to do a VBS. And I have been really wrestling with this because I am not called to disciple everybody else, every other church's kids. That's what I was always roughing with. But if I change the target and say, but I want to disciple children in my own church, and if they bring a friend, that's great. So if I change my perspective or my purpose, if I say it's about reaching the lost and none come and none are saved, or it's just the same five children raising their hands again, I have to really evaluate that. Am I going to spend that much money, that much time, that much effort, give a week, get all the volunteers, get everything to it? Does it hit the target, and is the target all point back to the mission of the church, and the 10 values. If it doesn't accomplish that thing that you're setting out to do, don't put it on the calendar. Um, maybe the purpose, uh, you got to ask yourself of the event, if it's going to be inside your church or outside. Maybe it could be a blend of both. It's possible. But if you as a leader can't solidify <laughs> inside yourself, I get in conflict. Like, And people are like, I can't tell Pastor Dean if you're really excited about it, or maybe you're just doing it out because everybody feels like we have to do it. They really want to see your heart, your mission, and value for that event. So make sure that you know what you're going into and have already predetermined what that event's purpose is for and may it be attached to those things. Is it going to unite the family? Is it going to bring fellowship? Is it just for fun? 
it's okay to plan fun, just as long as fun is the only thing on your calendar. Will this be a community outreach? Know your target. I am aiming for elementary children. Okay, how are we going to do that? And when I, when I clearly portray that to my team, instead of, we're going to have a fall festival. Okay, that's great. But if I'm going to do trunk or treat or a fall festival, I need to tell the people the why, the missional why and the target. Our target is to reach children fifth grade and under. We want to present to them, blah, I want to do that. Like I'm specific when I'm telling my team what we're starting anything for because then they're going to carry what, whose DNA into that mission. So everybody they talk to, hey, we're about, we're going to have the target, we're going to reach the fifth graders of this community and under. Do you see what happens? So when you set the direction, you know where that vector is going and it's going to hit that target. Very important. Um, know your audience. If you have you, you do this event and a ton of preschoolers show up, it might change your plan, okay? <laughs> so have a plan, know your audience, and find the best way to communicate and set your team up for success. That'll also carry a long way um, for that. So here's another thing. What is the main event? Um, is this, um, this is a kind of a new trend that I want to introduce to you, and maybe some of you already are doing it. Uh, one of the current trends for children's uh, leaders is to, to strategically place the greatest emphasis for events on Sunday morning. Um, Sunday morning is your bread and butter, right? It's, the, it's where you put your money. It's where you want your people to come to. It is really kind of the bread and butter of what your pastor wants you to have, that par excellence. Uh, that's the thing that you're really wanting the target to hit, right? And because it is the bread and butter, it is where many children's ministries right now, there's a, a, a kind of a new trend that's kind of going, and it's a good it's a good thing. It's just a good sampling of something that could uh, turn maybe perhaps your Sunday mornings into some, some exciting times <laughs> is having um, some sort of invite day. And that's what we, we call them. I just say, hey, we're going to have an invite day. Hey, NFC, we are, here's another value, inviters and includers. So I say the same things they say in the mains to my kids, and they say it in the youth. We all have the same mission. I didn't rechange it or reformat it. I keep the same ones and make it kid understandable. So I tell the kids, hey, we're trying something new. And that's something new. And we, I say it all the time because you want to create a culture of change. God's a change agent. People don't like the word change, but you need to have a culture of change. So in order to do that, it is really important that you continue to say the values. And so one of our values, hey guys, we're inviters and includers. How many know why we're having an invite day? And they're like, we invite people. <laughs> it's like, yes, two plus two is four. So the kids are really excited. They're like, oh, we're going to be inviters. And I say, take a flyer. You get one for yourself in your fridge, and you can take as many as you want to invite your friends. So I usually give them a stack of five to ten flyers. They don't just get one flyer. Because if I give them one flyer, I say, this is for you. If I give them five, it's saying invite other people. So we have mustache mania. That's a couple years old one. We, we did it just this last November. I've changed the graphics since then and put some of our kids with their mustaches. They get one to wear on the way in. And yes, it's there's mustache goo everywhere. And then they get one to wear on the way to school or whatever they're going to do. And then we have mustache raffles. And it only takes about eight minutes of the whole morning, you know. I do that little thing. They get the mustache kid. I have mustache um, lollipops that someone makes, chocolate pops. They get a mold. You can buy the mold online. So they get this little, and then it's all in a mustache bag, which you can find at Walmart. So I just put it in this little, I put these little kits, and then, then we do drawings and raffles, and kids all like to win. Everybody's a winner. And it took me all of a minute. Guess what happened? It triples those Sundays. <laughs> I, it's unbelievable. And here's what I know. I always share the gospel every Sunday, I know that when they come, they know when they invite their friends that they're going to hear Jesus. So some of the kids that might be a little more afraid, they know that Pastor Doreen or the team is going to share about Jesus and they have their opportunity to follow up with their friends about that. Another one we did was like Crazy Hat Day. Every kid likes to dress up. They do. We're going to have a Disney D Disney Dream Day or something. I don't know. I, I let my team kind of develop, which was awesome because everybody likes one Disney character of some sort. You'll have tons of princesses, not so, so much sure about buzzes, but it'll be fun, okay? Um, Star Wars is Disney, yes, and they, and they love that. We're going to have a donut day, uh, International Donut Days. There's three a year. What is that? They, how is that possible? So we picked on International Day. It's a Sunday. So, um, so just do some stuff that kids like. 
Yeah, yeah. We have Silly Band Sunday, you know, when the craze of Silly Band. We had Silly, oh, they were swapping Silly Bands and ooh, all that group. And they just swapped their Silly Bands. It was awesome. And I had my arm up, load them. We had, um, anyway, so invite days are great. I can share all of those with you if you'd like me to share. Um, I also connected with um, Dan Mateer when he was at East Ridge, and now Jessica Downs is there. He does one a Sunday. And they have a three-year rotation. <laughs> he has 50. He has Cheeto Sunday. He, he's got all sorts of things. He sent me the whole file. He didn't even hesitate. So if you want those files, let me know, and I'll send them your way. Um, and uh, bottom line, we want to remind our kids about the mission of God constantly. Do it on a Sunday morning. That's when they're there, most of them. Um, and we want events that are fun, fisher, and men bait to help them reach out to their friends and family. What are the big rocks? And I, I, I hadn't even heard of this term, but our pastor started using it. Um, and he started uh, saying, hey, we got to plan everything around the big rocks. And I'm thinking, big rocks? What are big rocks? <laughs> I was thinking, is that a challenge? What is that? And pastor would say, these are the things that all of the church uh, have to, everything else on the calendar must go around. The big rocks are the priority things that pastor has in place. Some discipleship plan, when baptism class is going to be, um, staff things, Christmas, can't move Christmas, sorry, uh, Christmas, Easter, <laughs> obviously those are big rocks. You wouldn't want to like do your BBS the week of Easter. That would be like, you know, like suicide, really. And um, <laughs> just saying. And so you have to go around the big rocks, right? Some of those are no-brainers. We know that. But go around the big rocks. But also, do you know the big rocks? Do you know what your pastor, board, staff, whatever the calendar staff planning is? Are you a part of that? Um, and then when you consider the big rocks, decide the plan of the non-negotiables. These are the things that, as a children's pastor, I advocate and cheerlead. These are the things I'm like, I, I'm, not the, I'm not budging. I might budge on the week, but I'm not going to budge on the fact that I think that is so valuable I want it. Okay? And number one, Sunday morning kids' church. No, we're not going to have kids' choir take the place of kids' church. And um, I, we've had this contention. Like, I, they, they, I now have kids' choir the last 15 minutes of each kid's church, but I had to shorten everything up, but I would not give up worship. I would not give up prayer time. I would not give up the message. I can give up the skit, and I can give up the game, but I will not give They're like, you're being so unreasonable, and I'm like, no, I'm not, because isn't that what our, us as leaders, we're responsible for the spiritual life of the kids and the worship environment. We have to guard it, so those are, that's a non-negotiable. Nursery, you got to have it. Your parents will veto you. You know, clubs, kids camp, discipleship courses for your kids um our wa water baptism class i advocated i want our kids to have every time you do an adult class we're doing a kid class and parents have to come and see if the kid's ready um, uh, parenting classes uh, their grow groups baby dedications etc then you need to determine what season it is and this one um as as you grow in life and ministry um is harder sometimes to see and I really feel that you need to discover that you have definite seasons in your life. You have seasons not only, you know, your kids growing up, there's seasons of life like parenting, um, but there are also seasons of life in ministry, seasons of life in your marriage. Um, and so there are seasons of life on the church calendar. Okay, there are times to do stuff, and there are times you do not put stuff. So when you plan your specific ministry calendar, you need to rise above the 50-foot level and take a look at the bigger picture. You need to identify when things at are adding up and when things need to slow down. Okay? Have you ever looked at your volunteer team or maybe you're on the one of the volunteers on the team go, I am so tired. If they add one more thing on my plate, I might break. Okay? A good leader looks and goes, is there anybody following me? <laughs> like, like, I might be out in the middle of the river all by myself. And, and wait a minute, i got to go back. Uh, regroup, okay? Um, there are some times I'm way out there, and they're like, Pastor Dorito, we can't keep up. You know, they're, they're at, or if you give me one more thing right now, I'm going to burst. Okay, have you seen that on the face of volunteers? I have. And you have to know the seasons of your staff. 
what is the larger church calendar already put on them? Maybe they're a part of a women's group. The Royal Rangers guys just did a thing. Moms had the kids three days, and you're going to plan another event. So look at that calendar. Look at these different levels. The 50-foot level says, I'm all about my ministry. I can really see it's kind of laser-focused, and sometimes it's blinders. I, I can see my single ministry and what I want to accomplish. Wait a minute. Back up. Zoom, zoom out. The 100-foot level. How is this going to impact me? Am I tired? Uh, sometimes you go through even when you're tired, but don't do that all the time or you'll have soul burnout, okay? Um, what about your family? Um, surgeries, life, sickness to uh, marriage. Do not sacrifice your family for the ministry. You must communicate to your team, hey, I don't think this is a season for that, and give them the human, normal reason why. Don't be afraid of the truth. Okay, we put on these big masks in leadership, and I'm, I'm so done with that. <laughs> it's like, this is, I'm tired. Pastor, I'm tired. And if I do this, it's going to be a great cost to my family. I can't do it. So you have to be honest, okay? Truth is the foundation of leadership. Take off the mask. Truth and trust are the foundational base. If you take any leadership course, you must have the ability to have trust with your leader. And that means speaking the truth and being a part of that. 250-foot level. Vroom, zoom out a little bit. Okay, now is my team around me? How are the volunteers doing? Oh, wow, what are they going through? What are the parents happening? Okay, oh, this is the week parents are in, and there's four days of teacher-parent conference. Don't book something then, right? <laughs> Look at your school calendar. Look at what the parents are going through. In the, you know, ours are the Auburn School District. I pull out the Auburn School District calendar, print it off when we come to calendar planning as a staff. Like, I have to be mindful of when students are in or not. I pull out my calendar, then I pull out the ministry calendar. Like, I have them all laid out there. They're like, Pastor Dre, how do you track all that? Like, if I don't, someone's going to die. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's track it, okay? It's not overwhelming. Just put it all on your phone, right? Okay? And then 500 foot, look it through pastor's eyes. Uh, the pastoral team's eyes, their perspective, uh, maybe, the, maybe your board's a part of that. Uh, look at them and be a part of your team. Hey, uh, our youth pastor's like, hey, Trunk or Treat's coming up. Do you want 50 youth? So he doesn't plan an event over my event. Okay, uh, when I was first in ministry, I had one youth pastor plan, I don't know, it was Hell House or something, right on the same night, the same time my event. I had zero youth helping me. It was threadbare. It was a catastrophe to me because it felt like we were divided the house um, we were not missional. So have that crucial conversation. Say, is this about us? <laughs> is this about what we think? So can we somehow um, talk as pastors and not knife and fork each other? We're on the same team. We must be a unified body. Okay, the thousand foot level, the whole church calendar. Wow. Okay, we've got Christmas in here and Thanksgiving. We're doing the serve big. We've got this happening. I don't think I should plan like another invite day on that day. That's just one more thing on the calendar. So I look at the whole church calendar, keeping all of these other foot levels, and then I, I plan accordingly. And you're like, how do you keep track of all that? You do. You get it. You, it's called the rhythm or seasons of your ministry. And I know you guys can do it. So what season is it? After taking into account the perspective of each level, it sometimes doesn't take, like, it's not rocket science. You're not taking hours, you know. Other times, maybe you really need to be reflective. Maybe you need to run away for a day and go, I, I'm at my wit's end. I need to take your pencil out and erase stuff off your calendar. Your eraser is your best friend. Nothing on your calendar should be in pen other than your wedding anniversary, your children's birthdays, okay? Those are the only things that are really impermanent. Those are things you can't change, okay? Everything else can move and be flexible. Be flexible in your calendars. And then ask for wisdom from colleagues. Say, hey, what season do you think is happening in our church right now? How, what's the temperature like? <laughs> if I stick my foot in, how's it going to be? Okay. Um, here's some extras to include now as you're planning. You're going into calendar planning. All of you pastors are standing there or your team's all got your calendar right. You're laid out. What else should you bring to the table? Pastor's like, oh, you thought of that? That's really awesome. So I always have fun. I plan for fun. So the little blue, if you haven't figured out, the fill in the blanks, right? Okay. Have, have you planned for fun? Okay. Fun is usually with your team. Yes, you have fun on Sunday mornings, but do you have fun with them? Work really hard together all the time. 
but can you plan some fun? Let's go do putt putt golf. Put your things down. We're gonna go do putt putt. Our pastor Garen does that. He goes, okay, everybody, get in the van. We're leaving. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> We're going to the Seattle Arena. We're gonna go hang out and look at dinosaurs. Okay. <laughs> and you know, we begrudgingly, and then the whole time on the way back, oh, we had so much fun. So glad we got away. You know, do that with your staff. Have a Christmas event at your house. People don't want to host them, but they love going to them when they don't have to prepare them. Right. And here's the deal. Come, they'll want to come to your house. They want you, you become human. You humanize yourself when you reach out and you, you show hospitality. And what does the Lord say when you show hospitality? That he blesses you back tenfold. Okay. So plan for fun together. Okay, that is super important. Staff meetings, curriculum plannings are priorities, but the parties, the outings, the activities, the retreats, the seasonal celebrations are the things that your team remembers. Those are the memory keepers, okay? And when things get tough, they're going to remember that as glue. That is going to be the glue for long term. Some extra things that you should have um, also should include, do you have plan, do you have a plan to meet and communicate with parents? If your calendar is devoid of any parent meeting, that to start there. That's probably one of the first things you should have. Your volunteer workers planning times, yes, but your parent meetings should be second. Your leader, children's workers, team, something should have parent meetings. Even if you're just a volunteer, you say, meet with those parents. Parents are floundering. They don't know what to do sometimes. They don't know how to parent. They need coachable, teachable moments. Plan parent meetings. So this is one of our, I just had on September 20, I always do one in the fall, and then I do one, one in the winter. And about every six months, you have new parents at your church, right? Do they know how things work? No. Okay. And so I just kind of, I give them a light continental breakfast. I tell them what's new in children's ministry, staffing, the, the Bibles. Um, what's next? I give them the next six months of calendar events. I give them my information, contact information, and I tell them, hey, parents, it matters about camp. I want you to start saving right now. Do you know? I give them a little savings plan. If you start saving $10 a month for, you'll have $120 by the time the event comes, and you know, you only need this much more, or $20 a month, and you'll have your kids' camp paid for. I tell them, I already told them that in September. I give them the annual calendar of all of the invite days and say, you help your children to get other children here to church and their families. Invite not just the children, invite their parents, okay? So you can only expect what you've laid out. If they, if they don't know anything about children's ministries or the plan that you're having, even if you're a large church, you can do it, or a small church, meet with the parents, get them on board to be the spiritual formation leaders of their home. And then I always give a spiritual tool. So one of the things I'll, I'll give a spiritual tool at that thing, I'll say, hey, moms and dads, how many of you have already bought in your child a Bible? Do you know which Bible you're going to ha have them read? And at what time they should buy? You know, don't go buy the King James. <laughs> you know, just because it's a you know, dollar at Walmart or the dollar store, that's not the version they need. <laughs> and I, I, t I give them little teaching coach mo moments on which Bible at what age, age. And they're like, oh, good, I didn't know what Bible. There's so many to choose from. Literally, there are so many out there. They don't know, so I just show them little pictures. And I see parents that are taking pictures of the screen. They're like, and they go and buy it. Because I'm telling them the Bible is what we teach. Get a Bible in your kid's hand. And they do it. It's cool. So do that. Um, timelines are important. Da 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 da. Hard to do, must do's. This is a must do. They help your team to accomplish that event. So I back it up, and every VBS curriculum has timelines provided for you, okay? So take their timelines and their ideas and transport it into any event you're doing. I literally took Gospel Light's VBS timeline and transferred it over to my trick-or-treat timeline. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I have to order this, and here's my lights. and So I wrote down all my to-dos, and then I put my to-dos in a timeline. So then when I had my meeting, they're like, oh, everybody saw the plan. Oh, we have to accomplish that by this date? Okay. Pastor Jermaine, I'll take this section. Because they can't see what they, oh, you just volunteer? Okay. Like, oh, what does all that mean? So timelines actually are to-do lists with intention that people can bite size say, okay, I'm available this week. I'll take that chunk, Pastor Jermaine. So I get sign-ups because I have a timeline. And they're like, they can see themselves in that paradigm. They, ca they can't sign up to something they can't see. So it's just like having a job description for your workers. You have a job description, you'll have workers. Because now you're recruiting with intentionality. Same thing with a timeline on events. They enable everybody to see the overall execution plan, and you can give assignments. Even if it's just one liner, someone's included. Guess what? 
they c- they'd start with something really small, and the next year, like, oh, yeah, we had such an amazing thing. I was on the VBS team. They might have done a little thing. Then now they're going to take three things. And then the next year, they might take a leadership role, okay? Your large events are your biggest recruitment. Can I say that again? And it's tried and true for 25 years for me. Every large event I do, I am on the lookout. Okay, who's my leaders? Who's going to be the next children's workers? I'm looking at them because you can see the light in their eyes. They get, they love it. They're missional. And guess what? They're less frustrated and have a successful event. They're going to be more s- turn around and, re- and volunteer. If you have a chaotic event with no timelines, they're not going to volunteer. They're like, I don't want to be a part of anything like that. I can't figure out, I can't figure out what, what, what's coming next. Okay? So they want a timeline. People hunger for organization. So if you're not organized, find somebody on your team to help you because there is that ability, all right? Evaluate and make changes. Share the wins and misses. Every good leader is open You in to invite the gift of construction criticism. You say, hey, do you have any gifts for me on this event? I, I use that. I'm trying to change the culture of our church instead of just criticism. And you statements, you did that, and I don't like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is how I give coachable moments. I say, this is how you bring something to the table that's a miss. You say, hey, I have a gift for you, Pastor Doreen. I'm telling you, it changes their demeanor when they have to think about what they're saying. Okay? So invite them to share the gift of construction criticism and do it at the front. Say, okay, at the end of this meeting, we're going to have an evaluation. Or at the end of this event, we're going to have an evaluation. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to be, be writing down, sharing the misses and the wins, but don't tell me in the process of it, unless it's a crisis. Unless we have to change the ship now or it's going to sink. Hold it. Hold your opinion. Hold your criticism until the end of the event and put it in writing for me. I said, because what I have found that it causes division, strife, frustration, stirs up the room, and that is not what God wants us to do. We are not to speak unless it's to build others up or, and according to their needs, okay, to build them up and to help repair things, not ever to tear down, to build unity, not, d- not division in the house of God. We're on the same team. That's what I always say. We're on the same team. There's no us and them. It's we. <laughs> we. So you say, we didn't do this right. Instead of, Pastor Dream, you didn't do that right. Because it's so easy for them to blame you. So coach them. Stop them in their tracks. I know it's uncomfortable. I don't like it either. I always go, mm. I don't like the way you're talking to me. <laughs> I'll have the deer on the <laughs> Like, can you back up, like, five feet because like you're in my bubble and I don't like it and they're like they laugh at me they think I'm crazy but it's true okay so give them the tools to give be able to give construction criticism find a way to evaluate your event in a way that you can compare it how can you make improvements if you don't ever write down or evaluate it okay very important and I compare I always pull out my file okay or my hard drive I pull it up how many apples did we buy oh that was too many I don't want that many apples oh Okay, we bought that. Oh, yeah, I remember that worked really well. If you have no record of what you bought, I save receipts. I staple everything. I copy everything. I put it in a file. When that event comes back out, I pull it out. Everybody's like, how do you remember? Put it in the file. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> save the stuff. I always go around to my people. Did you did you tell me how much you got? Give me a report. I want to, I want to, I really want to report. I want misses. And, and I know that I'm detail-oriented, but it, it really helps you if you put it in a file or write notes, put it in your, um, your, um, file folders and keep track track if you track the progress over time you will make substantial improvements to the overall strategy and then you'll be able to evaluate did it accomplish the mission of the church the 10 filter values if you can't line it up to that we ain't doing this next year Razor, or maybe oh we need to tweak about half of that or you're right we need to stop doing that let's do it this way to make sure that it's in alignment okay Here is my big old conclusion. Know the big heart, heartfelt, and missional why. So I said that in the beginning, but it's true. Start with the why of any event. Why am I feeling we should do this? Why is God wanting us to do this? Why, Pastor Doreen, often people ask me, why are we doing this now? (laughs) If you don't know the why, find it. Because a good leader will know and establish its reason before they start. A good leader will ask the question that will help filter out what events should be placed now on that calendar or not, or not, and will create enthusiasm for all involved. Do you want to join my team now? Can I sign you up?
because I'm organized and I'm on mission. I know where I'm going. Help me reach the target. And guess what? We're going to see lives transform and children come to know Jesus Christ. Can you help me do that? And my team was like, Rah! yeah, let's go. Okay, that's what you want. You are the quarterback. They will follow you. Choose events that reflect your church's mission, leadership team, and you. If you don't like it, don't do it. Just because whatever church is doing it doesn't mean it fits. Doesn't mean that it fits your plan and what God has called you to do. So I have five minutes and I'm done. Woo! So we have five minutes to ask any question you'd like. Uh, it could be about calendar planning, vision, children's ministries. If I can answer it, I'd be happy to. And at the end, I'd like to give you my business card. I'd love to pour into you. Any resource I have, I always share it. That's that's my heart. I just want to empower uh, leaders. I can give you the 52 weeks uh, from Eastridge's, and then I have a whole bunch of things that we did, Silly Band Sundays, all those flyers that I made. I'd give you anything. Just so just, 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 no, you know, I, I have a little par parenthetical statement. I love fonts, so if you haven't noticed, <laughs> so you're going to have to load fonts. So let me give you two font sites real quick, defont.com and fontsquirrel.com. And you will find every font that Pastor Reed uses pretty much. I love fonts. So that's kind of a fun thing. So questions, Q&A. Yeah. No questions. Da font, D-A font. So, great question, and the, her question is, how can she find out the vision and the heart of the senior pastor and the pastoral team? And she is his spouse, so that's awesome. So, the question uh, for me, that how we discovered, I'll tell you two ways we did it. Number one, we went through the book, Cracking Your Church's Culture as a Pastoral Team. And then from there, it taught us how to communicate culture, which is vision, mission, values. Okay, so um, second, find out if they're in writing, and then bring a copy for him and you and say, can you tell me what these mean to you? I think that's a big thing. If you can see, it's kind of like the it's kind of like pulling back the veil. I see the words, but what's the, what's the heart felt behind the, that mission statement? And then if he says, well, I don't really know, then it's time for him to evaluate. And, and maybe as a staff person or even spouse, you might say, you know, honey, I think we should figure this out. Because it's hard for us, my ministry, or any department to follow a mission we can't verbally verbalize. So we have it on panels in our church. We have it on every document. You can see it. every email I send out has a value statement on it. Um, I am communicating that because vision leaks. So Andy Stanley says vision is starts out here, and then, and then a week's in a week's time, it's already leaked. You have to go right back. You'll say the same vision 30 times. 50 times, and the one person might hear it for the first time. So a leader doesn't get tired of vision statements. So I would ask him to explain his vision. He has to be able to explain it. So um, help, help equip him. Say, here's our mission statement or our value statement, or I'm not really sure where they are. <laughs> find somebody who does. If you can't find it in writing, then I, it's a book like that. Um, there are other tools out there on helping to write your missions and uh, mission statement and values of the church. He, it has to come from him and the leadership. Yep. How do you, how do you follow it? Uh, as the pastor gets a, a fresh um, direction for the year mm -hmm. and you want to sit down and plan for your year, uh, how can you open the lines of communication so that before you're making all your plans, you're mm -hmm. hearing, okay, well, if he wants the whole church to be focusing in on evangelism this year, we need to know that before mm -hmm. we start. 
so are you a part so her question is how do you how do you find um, the like even the annual or seasonal times of the direction of the church so I would say that that's going to be you need to be on a, a some form of leadership meeting so a pastoral does he meet with the departments there needs to be some kind of annual or biannual meeting that he has with you that you can Q and A. <laughs> hey what's the direction not to be uh, against you are to build pastors up so sometimes they don't have the answers right they're human beings just like us so you are showing honor and respect by saying pastor hey let's discover that together instead of you should know or I can't follow if you don't have it oh no you come and say pastor I really want to figure this out can we do it together hey let's write it out hey do you think we could have another meeting so present it in such a respectful way that he is not it's just the same with our spouses like I'm not going to attack my guy right I'm going to build him up and then kind of wrap it nicely and say and do you think <laughs> you could fix that leaky faucet okay so <laughs> Because really, it's a leaky faucet. If you cannot, if you cannot identify it, it's a leaky faucet. You got to fix, okay? And in a kind way, in a respectful way, and you know your man more than anybody. Help him discover that, and it starts with prayer. Pray for him. Pray before you go into that meeting, and then just say, "Hey, I really want to." Sorry, I'm always looking this way because my computer's this way. Go about loving on your senior pastor. I can't tell you enough. They need it. All right. Any other question? We have one minute. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, of course you do. Yes. Reboot. Okay. Take a year off. So I've taken two years off of trunk or treat much to the dismay of our church. <laughs> I took two years off off one. It, d it overlapped the overall mission and value of something we were launching right now. And the second and the other year, we need a break. And what will happen, you'll reinvent it. Say, we're just going to take this season off, and we're going to come back and visit this, recruit a whole new team, cast a whole new vision, do it all over again, and prove it. Do those wis m wins and misses and rechange the event to be the event you know can be successful. Okay? Yep. Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. And you'll have new leaders. Bring new leaders up. If it's missional and it's hitting the target of your church, don't get rid of it. Just temporarily put it on the back burner. Come back around. Yep. All right. You guys have been awesome. It is time. I'm going to let you go to your next workshop. Please pick up my business card if you need any questions. I'll give you anything I've got.